good morning good afternoon good evening depending on when and time you are coming across this video in this episode i'll be sharing with you on what dr ebe damina and apostle michael oboro mentioned that god cannot prosper if you just wanted to hear from the video of dr ebe damina and apostle Just want to yeah. And I heard somebody also said that now he didn't call my name, but he said, I hear that there's some man of God that is busy saying God cannot prosper you. The one I hear heard recently, they said Jesus does not make people rich. They said the disciples never made anybody rich. You know, look at everybody. These people won't go around saying God makes people rich. That statement in itself is an insult on God's character. The moment you say God is the one that makes people rich, it means God is the one that created class in society. And the moment you say God created class in society, we can no more be just. That means God created people poor and created some people rich. And the poor are those that God doesn't like. The rich are those God likes. The moment you put God in that in that parameter, it means God is partial. I will show you that Jesus makes people rich. And I will begin from the scripture to refute it. How many of you know where you were born contributes to whether you are wealthy or not? Yes. Miss this one is what I love so much. Say where you were born contributed whether you are rich or not. So God does not make anybody rich. So let's 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 make from his own perspective as a man of God that where he was born, the very rich is there before he came at a come and become became minister and start doing well in ministry aspect and God have blessed his family and his, his dad was 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 broke but him now after collecting titan offering he's, he's getting to another dimension of life he's getting to another level of life and now he's telling people that tight is wrong you know this i'm not talking about tight this morning what i'm talking about is that god does not prosper people that's what i'm trying to treat this morning but there's one thing he just mentioned that the family you came out from determine whether you will be rich or you will be poor and the people you follow around determine whether you will be rich or you will be poor so let me just say now only within the talk but it almost mostly go further again to put some attribute for some certain things within the talk just watch just watch another statement again you see in just drop and this one loud let me say in talk with the main team but the way in take talk about where are you where are to whether you are wealthy or not, number one. Number two, which home you came from, which family you came from has a lot to do with wealth and poverty. Which family you came from. Eh? Number three, the discipline you are exposed to and the lifestyle you are exposed to determines whether you be poor or rich. Then finally, the circle you hang around. The circle of people you hang around will determine whether you are poor or you are rich. True or false? He that walketh with the wise will be wise. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. You don't blame God for any of those choices. God makes nobody rich and makes nobody poor. God has created a planet. And in this planet, he has put treasures. He has put gold, diamonds, oil wells. In this planet, he has put agriculture, techno technological abilities and capabilities. They are all in the planet. He gave everybody a brain. Huh? And then men by their brain have invented ways of making money called commerce and industry. You go to school and part of what you learn in school is how to engage your brain in commerce and industry to make money. People go to school to develop technological uh, you know, skills. And then as you provide services to meet human needs, for the services you provide, you are paid. So how, how effective you are in engaging in the, in the industry, engaging in commerce, engaging in investments, 
engaging in seizing opportunities, engaging in developing skills that are relevant, not just skills, but relevant skills to the economy and to the society. That is to what degree you will make money. God doesn't have to be involved. Let them have. He has handed over the planet to man. And then some people come and sit down in church. Oh God, make me rich. Oh God, make me rich. Oh God, make me rich. Sow a seed and get it. And then you sow a seed, but you don't get it. You sow a seed, you don't get it. Oh God, make me rich. No. Don't blame God for your failure to engage. Somebody was challenging a quote I put out yesterday. And I said to him, he was saying, God makes certain people rich. And I said to him, God gave you a brain. Stop blaming God for your inability to use your brain. I said, this is where religious bigots miss it and face it. The apostles emphatically said, he that does not walk should not eat. Selah. If you study the book of Third John, I think that's in verse 2 now. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. We paint it nowadays as though in Christ Jesus, all there is about prosperity is spiritual prosperity. And you hear things like, Jesus does not make men rich. If God makes people rich, there will be no need for the apostles to emphasize industry. Walk. Let him that stole taught you that in the epistles, it exonerates God from being responsible for whether people are rich or not. Philippians chapter 4, Philippians 4 15. They said, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I did. Now, the, the men of God have been quoting the scriptures. Dr. Beda Mena will quote Apostle Mike or Robo will quote his own. And we the believers or we that believe that both of them are saying something that is right from their own perspective, everything they are saying is right. Is it that those this men this men are trying to confuse us or is it that this men are saying something that is somebody now on the comment section I will mention that he does not like the way I see things. This one I did not say anything. I'm only talking towards the video you are watching. This one is this one. If you follow my Facebook page, I post the direct video that I did not react in anything, I just post direct. So, this one here, I just want you to hear from the verses those men of God are quoting from. I just want you to hear it from where this one will go. Started from Macedonia. No church communicated to me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. This is the foundation of my God shall supply all your needs. He didn't say shall supply your wants, he said shall supply your needs. The basic necessities of life, not flamboyant life, but the basic necessities food to eat and cloth to wear and we are to sleep. The need is talking about here yeah, our physical needs, my necessity. I'm giving context. Next verse. He said, Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound unto your account. Now he's talking, God will bless you for what you have done. Verse 19. He now said, Because you gave. He said, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So the context of these riches are the physical blessings God gives you for your own physical acts of faith. Now Paul took time to show you what the riches in glory are. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Next verse. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the same. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So the riches in glory are in believers. Every child of God is a custodian of the riches in glory. So when he says, my God shall stop of God to get you from here to here. But when he gets you here, you will have to know what to do to remain here. That you are as healthy in body as you are. A good life and support the gospel. Now, there is, there, there is there's something I, I love that the man of God at the end, at the end, he mentioned, at the end, he mentioned that, that you need to work to support the gospel. You need to do something to support the, the gospel. Now, 
Dr. Ebed Amina is a great man of God from his own, the way he preached, the way he has changed the issue of tithing and the issue of the soup and everything in the contents of Christianity these days. He's doing a good job and a great job that we may recommend him for doing. But the issue of God does not prosper people from my own suggestion or from my own god can easily prosper god can easily prosper anybody please on the comment section you can easily drop your own comment or what you think or what you thought that god can easily do